based off the looks of it, you're trash. So in today's video, I'll be teaching you guys how to get better. Let's get right into this. Now there are seven things on this list. They're not ranked in order of how important they are, but they all will help you improve. First thing I'm gonna talk about though is having good aim. Now apparently that's super obvious. You know, yeah, if you have good aim, you're probably gonna be good at almost any game, but that's because it's true. You can improve your aim by just simply playing no scoop arcade or by playing aim trainers. Preferably if you wanna get good, I would suggest to play golden gun or anything related to golden gun. This is because on golden gun you only have one shot and the one shot actually kills the opponent one tap just like in no scoop arcade majority of your shots are probably going to one tap the player the second step on how you want to get good is to learn the game now what i mean by learn the game is like learning tactics the map bugs not too long ago i made a video on how to wall hop now note the only way to wall hop is with the awp as of what i know now if you want to know how to wall hop the link of the video will be in the description but there's also another bug where you can speed slide or well, i don't even know what it's called i'm gonna just call it speed slide if you don't know what that is i might make a video on it but technically it just means you can move like super quickly while you're sliding and it's actually pretty cool you might see me do it a few times in these clips knowing the layout of the map is also good this can be good because you can know certain shortcuts to certain parts of the map or maybe even trick your opponents to thinking you're somewhere else when you're actually like way above them the next thing i want to talk about is taking breaks back in the day i'd play for less than an hour but usually more than 30 minutes mainly because i seen that my skill was decreasing the longer i played so if you do see yourself missing a lot more shots than you normally did when you first started playing then i would suggest to take a break for maybe 10 20 minutes and then come back not only is taking breaks proven to work but based off of personal experience when i take breaks i usually perform better afterwards maybe 10 20 30 minutes that should be good enough and then come back to your game and one that is super important is to stay calm sometimes you might be fighting a good player in the game and it could make you stressed out or maybe even a toxic player this can maybe get the adrenaline pumping which is not good because when your adrenaline's pumping your hands start getting shaky when your hands are shaky you can't aim and it just it it's a whole spiral going down. Usually when this happens, that's a good, you know, point to say. Maybe you just to take a break. So yeah, make sure to stay calm, breathe well, good rests. Yo, this next tip is kind of for PC only, but I'd suggest getting an FPS bypass. Roblox is normally set to 60 FPS, which means even if you have a godly PC, you will not go over 60 FPS since it's capped. But with having the FPS bypass, you can well bypass it if you want to know how to get the fps bypass what you're going to want to do is search up roblox fps bypass then you're going to want to click this right here sometimes it may not be the first one so make sure you actually click the right one it's going to take you to this you're going to want to scroll down to usage and click this after being brought to this page you're going to want to click this and then it'll instantly start the download after you press save i'm not going to press save because i already have it downloaded but that's how you download it after having it downloaded it should pop up something like this you're going to want to double click it for me, it says Roblox FPS Unlocker is already running. For you, it show up this weird code manual, and then it will automatically set it to. So that's how you download the Roblox FPS Bypass. I would always double check to see if it's on every time you sign out or restart your computer. But not only is having an FPS Bypass, it doesn't really do much if you can't get to 60 FPS anyway. So that means lowering your graphics level is a good way to prevent not even reaching 60 FPS in the first place. Personally, I play on the level three graphics level. The reason I don't have it on the lowest is because when it's on the lowest, you can't see the map all the way. So having it on three disables all the shadows, but still makes it to where you can see pretty far. The only time I don't have my graphics level on three is usually when I'm making a montage because the shadows kind of make the montage a little bit better. But I've only had one montage on this channel. So very rarely do I actually have my graphics really high. Now the last thing on this list is to watch Vita Vinci. I'm assuming most of the people in this video aren't really that good at No Scoop Arcade, so when they watch players that are better, you may be able to learn something from them. I have a lot of No Scoop Arcade videos, and if you're not really that good, just watch them, and you may be able to learn a few tricks from me. And hopefully, you learned a few tricks in these clips as well. So yeah, that's the list of things to do to get better at No Scoop Arcade. Now note, some of these are not gonna make you better overnight. This is probably gonna take a week to a month, maybe. My skill has gained rapidly in the past two to three months, though. Like a few months ago, I was nowhere near as good as i am now so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video if you want to see more please like subscribe and i got nothing else to say farewell